The Theory of Everything is a beautiful film, both in its story and in its visuals. But the film's visuals are much more than just pretty images. The cinematography is intentional and meticulous. One of the best examples of this is when the doctor tells Steven about his disease. We've all seen this type of scene before. One character is delivering important news to another. And a lot of times it looks something like this. It's my father, isn't it? Yeah. I see him everywhere I go. I can't, I, I don't know what, I don't know what to do. Or this. Fanny, I'm pregnant. Okay, these scenes work to move the plot forward, but you don't feel it. The news doesn't hit you as hard as it should. This is in part because of the lack of effort put forth in the cinematography. These scenes just bounce back and forth from the same two or three bland shots without adding anything visually. The audience sees the characters and that's it. The cinematography is not being used to push the emotion of the scene. But what happens when you use cinematography to help achieve the right emotion? That's exactly what the theory of everything does in this scene. The first shot is an establishing shot. Notice how the Doctor and Steven sit side by side, not across from each other. This is to show that the Doctor is not an opposing force, he is here to help Steven. The first shot slowly pushes in as the Doctor explains Steven's disorder to him. The walls are slightly distorted because of the length of the lens. The slow dolly in, the distortion on the walls, and the washed out green look give a sickness to the shot. Also, take note of the people moving in the background. They seem unintentional, but they become important later. We cut to an extreme close-up of Steven. Fear and confusion sit in his eyes as the doctor explains the disease. We are very close to Steven, with his left eye sitting at the center of the frame. His reaction to the news is important to help the audience understand the severity of this disease. Again, notice the people in the background. Now we cut to a wide-angle close-up of the doctor. The wide angle stretches his face, making him look distant and giving him an odd, stressed look. This further pushes the audience to sympathize with Steven and see the doctor as someone who is opposing him. Notice the doctor's position. The doctor's face doesn't even take up half of the screen. This large amount of supposedly pointless space on the left is off-putting. On top of that, he is facing the left. This is important. Our minds naturally perceive left to right as positive, while perceiving right to left as negative. If you'd like to know more about this idea of left and right being positive or negative, I recommend watching Now You See It's video on the subject, linked down below. This is also a POV shot from Steven's perspective. Yes, the doctor is trying to help and explain to Steven what is going on, but the horror of the news distorts Steven's view. Now we come back to Steven. It's easier to notice how normal he looks in contrast to the doctor. His face isn't stretched or oddly shaped, but he looks trapped by the top and bottom of the screen, cutting off his forehead and chin. When we cut back to the doctor, again note the people in the background. The doctor continues to speak and then Steven tries to gain some good news. What about the brain? The brain isn't affected. The doctor tells him the brain is unaffected, but the shots don't change. This is good news, but it's not enough to change how Steven feels about the situation. I'm ever so sorry. Then the doctor leaves abruptly, as if it took no time at all for him to stand and walk a considerable distance away from Steven after saying I'm sorry. This is because the doctor is distant. He is distant from his patients because he has to deliver news like this on a regular basis. He does care for Steven's well-being, but he is not a friend, he has other things to tend to, so he leaves. And as he leaves, the camera's focus does not follow him. We are in Steven's point of view. Steven isn't watching the doctor walk away, he is trying to cope with the news he just heard. And as we cut back to Steven, he sits alone in the chair. The camera pulls away. Notice the background. No one is walking through now. Previously, there were people constantly walking around, but now Steven is fully alone. Alone with the news that his body is crumbling and that he has two years to live. This scene lasts only one minute and 35 seconds, but the intentional cinematography helped nail the feeling of despair and helplessness aimed for by the director. So many movies today take important scenes like this and put little to no thought into how to visually complement the emotions of the scene. The camera is a filmmaker's greatest tool when used correctly. Thanks for watching.